Hello, this is going to be a demonstration of how you might be able to use uh, to find functions as power series. Power series are really neat and the basic premise of much of what we're about to do stems or is described right in the beginning here and that is if you have a sum x to the nth power where your series is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so forth, that being a geometric series, that infinite sum is given by 1 over 1 minus x. And so we are going to make use of this property that 1 over 1 minus x is the power series sum of x to the n. So keep that in mind. There is a quick example at the top here of 1 over 1 plus x squared. If we could put that into the form of 1 over 1 minus some function of x, which I do in the uh, top middle there, 1 over 1 minus negative x squared, and then you replace all the x's in the top series here with negative x squared and simplify, you get your answer. So 1 over 1 plus x squared is the infinite series of 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4th minus x to the 6th and so forth. And so I am looking right here. Here are some important details. So we have that relationship. And then this example is given right here. <clears throat> some other details we are... Um, if a power series has a radius of convergence that is positive, then we know that it's both differentiable and integrable. And so that's neat if we happen to know the radius of convergence. And so keep this, uh, this property in mind. We might make use of it. Let's get to actually doing this. So in the first problem here, we want to state the function h of x, which is 1 over x plus 2 as a power series. And so I am going to play with this. So we've got 1 over x plus 2, which is the same as 1 over 2 plus x, which is the same as 1 over 2 times 1 plus x over 2. And this is 1 half times... 1 over 1 minus a negative x over 2. So I finally put it into the 1 over 1 minus function of x form. And now I'm going to start plugging in. So we have 1 half times 1 plus negative x over 2 plus negative x over 2 squared plus negative x over 2 cubed plus, and it goes on and on and on, which is 1 half times 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 4 minus x cubed over 8, and then it would be plus some more. <clears throat> and if we multiply through by that half, finally gets us to 1 half minus x over 4 plus x squared over 8 minus x cubed over 16 plus the infinite terms that are remaining. And that would be our answer for each of x as an infinite power series. Now let's take a look at the next problem. So this is the function x cubed over x plus 2. So what I notice here is I've got x cubed over x plus 2 is x cubed times 1 over x plus 2. And we just found this series or this function as a power series in problem one. So I'm going to make that substitution, which was one half 
minus x over 4 plus x squared over 8 minus x cubed over 16. And I'm going to multiply through by that x cubed, which gives us x cubed over 2 minus x to the 4th over 4 plus x to the 5th over 8 minus x to the 6th over 16 and onwards. And so it could be really useful to recognize simpler functions as power series and just multiply or divide appropriately as we did in this instance here. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So here we want to find the power series representation for the natural log of one over one plus x and its radius of convergence. Let's first figure out the power series representation. Now this is not a one over one minus x form, but I know that the derivative of the natural log of x is one over one plus x. Sorry, this is actually the derivative of the natural log of one plus x. That is one over one plus x, which is one over one minus a negative x. And that is one minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the fourth, and so on. Now that's the derivative. Which means if I want the nat the series for the natural log of 1 plus x, then I want to integrate that. So that's what I want to investigate. So I'm going to integrate 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed and so forth. And that's going to give me x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the 4th over 4 and onwards. And there would be a constant, so there would be a plus c in here also. And this would be our answer, <clears throat> or at least it would be the series. We haven't gone to the radius of convergence yet. <clears throat> All right, so what do we need? Well, I know that the natural log of one plus x evaluated at when x is zero, <clears throat> that's gonna be the natural log of one, which is zero. And if I plug into the series part of it, when x is 0, I've got 0 minus 0 minus plus 0 minus 0 and so forth, which gives me c. And so c must be 0, which means that the natural log of 1 plus x is just x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over four onwards. And that c, now we know, is zero. So there's no c to, to plug in there. <clears throat> now we want to find the radius of convergence. So let me highlight this. That is our series representation. Now we need to figure out how can we rewrite this? Well. I see that a n is alternating, and so I've got a negative 1 that I'll just put to an n for now. And I see that x <coughs> is increasing in power, 
And so it's going from x to the first, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, and so forth. And it happens to be divided by that same power. Which I'll write like that. <clears throat> now let's see if this works. So when n is 1, we have x to the first over 1, but negative 1 to the 1 is negative. And so I need to shift that once more. And this is going to give us all of our terms. So when n is 2, we're going to have negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, x squared over 2. When, x, when n is 3, you're going to have positive 1, x cubed over 3, and so forth. So this looks like our sequence representation for the, the, uh, the sequence part of the series, so inside the summation. To get the radius of convergence, we want to use our ratio test. So we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1, which is negative 1 to the n plus 2, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, divided by negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the n divided by n. which is the limit as n goes to infinity. And being absolute value, the negative one part will disappear and we have x to the n plus one over x to the n times n over n plus one. <clears throat> And this simplifies a little bit, so I could see that the that this portion here is x to the n times x over x to the n, which is just going to leave us with an x. So let's write that out. Now that x has nothing to do with n, so I could pull it outside of the limit. We've got... Oh, actually, I can't get rid of the absolute value sign because I don't know the value of x. But n is going to be positive. <clears throat> so this is what we're faced with in this step here. And now that limit is going to be 1. which means that, <clears throat> that we are left with the absolute value of x. We want the radius of convergence, so we want to know when does this converge, and the ratio test implies convergence when it is less than 1. So this means that the radius is 1. And that's it. So there's some neat things that you could do with power series, and I've demonstrated a few tricks. Sometimes you may need to think about the derivative or maybe even the integral of a function um, in order to get it into a fractional form that you could then manipulate into a power series. So keep that in mind if, uh, if you need to do so. And enjoy.